All right, so Jimmy Dore had on Tim Pool. Now, Tim Pool is, the way I describe him is, he's basically the Dave Rubin of quote-unquote journalism, if you can call that what he does, because from most of the videos that I see, he just kind of reports on the news like everyone else. But uh, this guy's a really big tool. He's a really big hack. He plays the Dave Rubin card where he's like, you know, I'm a liberal who sees how crazy the left is. And so then he does you know, a bunch of videos basically saying that, right? So, you know, and I, I recommend, you know, just go to his channel right now, look at his video list, and just look at all of the cringy titles and videos he does. You know, whether it be, you know, Bernie Sanders is a white male and that's why he's going to lose, and all of this crazy AOC bashing and just consistent and annoyingly stupid you know, uh, videos defending Republicans. But Jimmy Dore had him on because it's about the censorship thing. He went on Joe Rogan and made a fool of himself as always. Um, anyway, so Jimmy Dore actually did a pretty good job checking Tim Pool here. And we're going to check out a couple of clips of him doing so. What, what do you think makes you a centrist? Like, what do you uh, center about? So I, I think You're... in terms of economic policy, mm -hmm. I think um, I, I used to be... So have you ever seen a political compass, how it's got the four quadrants? Yeah. I used to be really close to like Jill Stein and Bernie Sanders, and I've moved a little bit closer to the center, and that means I'm less in favor of certain social policies than I used to be. Okay. But, but I still fall on the left in that, like I tweeted about it. Um, like what would be one of those social policies you're less Progressive in? tax, hands down 100%. You're against the progressive? No, 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 I'm for the progressive tax. Oh, okay. So that, that, that makes you more progressive then. That's, that's what I mean. Um, oh. So I, I think the minimum wage is, so uh, here, here's what puts me at odds with uh, conservatives. Uh huh. Minimum wage, progressive tax, uh, regulation on big companies and big business, and ex the expansion of civil rights for marginalized groups. Conservatives are like less government, less government, less government, and I'm like I'm pro-choice. Uh, and I, I say with caveats on all of these. So do you see how he's being super vague about all those things that he just mentioned? This is like Dave Rubin to the max. I don't know how you could not see the connection here. Where first of all, he's trying to play the. I'm a liberal card and be like, you know, he's just doing it in a different way. The way he's doing it is I'm concurrently a liberal and I'll continue to be a liberal. But, you know, the left has become so loony and, inc and crazy and insane. That, you know, someone like me who's a liberal myself has seen, whoa, I have to, you know, sound the alarms and make all these videos, you know, crapping on them. Right. So he does it in just a little bit of a different manner. That's all. But like he says, you know. Minimum wage. Okay, what do you mean about the minimum wage? Do you mean raising the minimum wage? Do you mean the existence of a minimum wage? I don't know how prevalent the position of abolishing the minimum wage is amongst right-wingers. In fact, I would venture to say that's an absolute loony, far-right, libertarian ideology that is insane. Um, so I don't know, is he saying you want a $15 minimum wage? Does he want a $12 minimum wage? Does he want to raise it at all? Is it just the existence? Be more clear. And at some point in this, I forget where it was, but he literally says the words, you know, I have a lot of ideas or something. And I was like, oh, God, Dave Rubin all over again, once again. But super vague about all of these different issues. Like, what exactly are you talking about? And then a progressive tax. Like, OK, again, if you're for someone who's like for a flat tax, you're pretty hard right. Um, now, a flat tax is more mainstream amongst the Republicans than I think abolishing a minimum wage. But it's still a pretty crazy position to hold to not want a progressive tax rate. But, you know, let's get into the details. You know, what do you support? Do you support AOC 70% top marginal tax rate? Do you not support that? You know what I'm saying? So, like, let's get into the details here. You know what I mean? But we're not getting any of those details. He's just kind of naming off these very basic, you know, positions of, you know, oh, the minimum wage should exist. And we don't even know what exactly he's referencing. And by the way, I also want to mention, he says social policies. Now, technically, the progressive tax is a mix because, you know, sometimes the, you know, the uh, the argument for it could be a social one. But, you know, it's obviously an economic one as well because it has to do with tax policy, which is, you know, an economic issue. So it's a mix of the two. It's not solely social policy. Um, and I would actually possibly go and say that it's more economic policy than it is social policy. But that's kind of another, I guess, discussion to have. Um, and then he, remember I told you, in the beginning he says that, you know, I don't agree on some of the social policies that the left, you know, believes in now. 
And it's like, okay, you didn't really mention any social policies that you disagree with the right or the left wing on. In fact, you didn't say any of them. And there's, you know, one that he's going to mention here in a second, which in a bit we're going to look at, and that's universal health care. But universal health care is not a social, uh, that's not a, you know, a social issue. Um, that's sort of a, a mix. I guess maybe it could be partially a social issue, but really it has a lot to do with economics as well. Um, if not more economics, actually, because it's, you know, the issue is about how do we get people health care while having, you know, lesser amount of our GDP being used for health care and then have better outcomes. Doesn't really all, have, you know, so I guess somewhat of a factoring of social comes in here, but that's all that he ends up mentioning. But, uh, you know, again, super vague. And we're going to look at this next clip here. Complicated. And this is one of the, the difficulties between the left and the right is understanding the nuance of the argument. But. I, 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 so what is the what is the part that you're opposed to left on? So I used to be for universal health care. Oh, now, you're not. Now I'm more for public option, and the 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 reason for that primarily is I don't know what the difference is between the, the government administration of health care versus private, in a, from national level level averages. I understand there's going to be nuanced things like profit motive versus the public good, but. I, I kind of felt like if we reduce all of our choices to one, we could we could create a situation where the government has no obligation to do better and fix the bloat. And my reference for this is how the school system has progressed. I look at a lot of the social programs we have, and I'm like, well, we definitely need to expand social programs. We definitely need a progressive tax. We need to keep social inequality in check. Otherwise, the entire system will collapse from, you know, wealth inequality creates destabilization. But when I look at schools... Uh, and, and certain welfare programs, it feels like the response from government tends to be, we get a cut on our arm, let's put a Band-Aid on it. A month later, well, it's starting to fester, let's put a Band-Aid on it. And then eventually you've got this big, like, just they keep wrapping more bandages. At a certain point, you got to wipe it off, clean the wound, and re-bandage it. And so my concern is there needs to be something to make, to, to incentivize a government program entirely on its own. Look, when you look at the post office. See, to me, Obamacare is a Band-Aid. And it's a it's a I, it's I a agree. big bunch of band aids, I different band aids, and it's and it's there to protect the profit motive and make sure it stays somehow in healthcare, and it still leaves thirty million people out. I, I, All right, so as you guys just saw, Tim Tool says that he's now no longer for universal health care. And Jimmy Dore asks him, like, well, why would you not be for universal health care? It's one of the most boneheadedly obvious positions there are, considering all the numbers that you can look at. You know, the uh the percentage of GDP that we spend on healthcare is immense. It's far more than other nations, and we end up getting worse health outcomes. What kind of a fiscal conservacunt could possibly look at that? Look at the sheer numbers, right? You have millions, tens of millions of people uninsured, right? No healthcare. You have a higher percentage of GDP being spent on healthcare, and you have worse outcomes. Who in their right mind looks at that and goes, wow, free market really works. That doesn't make any sense. And I don't even get why you'd be like, if you're a Bernie guy, how do you become anti-universal healthcare? And moving to the center is the lamest thing on the planet. What is the, what is the, you know, incentive for moving to the center? What is cool or enticing about moving towards the center? Nothing. There's nothing enticing about moving towards the center. You're just becoming a milk toast, you know, loser, basically. And what he's doing is he's probably doing that for more brownie points amongst right wingers. And it rolls deep. This guy has a has a um, sort of right wing hack mentality, a Dave Rubin hack mentality ingrained in his brain. So every response he gives you is one where it's like, wow, dude, you really have been brainwashed to this really ridiculous point. And the money has really strangled you down at this point. And then he says, you know, having the one funding thing, that's actually a rationale. I think it was given by Warren Buffett. Uh, I can't remember if it was Warren Buffett or Bill Gates. But that's actually a rationale for bringing the cost down. And also, part of Medicare for All is the government uh, negotiates with the pharmaceutical industry to bring drug costs down. That's what they do in Canada as well. So it's one of the rationales for actually bringing the cost down, not for it, you know, becoming bad or whatever he's, he's saying. But the thing about Medicare for all is, is that, you know, everyone gets a universal Medicare card, which is an insurance. 
you know, private hospitals aren't just going to disappear off the planet. Now, the way that the health insurance works, and we'll get into this in a second too, we'll round you guys in a second, but the way that uh, this is going to work is basically he'll, everyone will get a Medicare card, and just like currently, you can't duplicate Medicare, it's illegal to do so. Uh, you can have supplemental insurance for things not provided under, under Medicare, and um, that's something that exists in Canada as well, that, that whole idea. So... And then he brings in the Band-Aid analogy, which is the dumbest pot. It's literally the worst analogy you could possibly bring up. And Jimmy Dore kind of like debunks it right away. He's like, dude, Obamacare was the bandages that didn't actually focus on the real problem and give a solution to it. It just tried putting Band-Aids on it. So, you know, let's put in this, you know, uh, this Her Heritage Foundation plan that was this... Um, proposal that was the response to single-payer health care where it was like you know oh yeah let's put in let's mandate you to buy insurance from private health insurance companies i love how like people on the right like treat that as some egregious thing as if that's not a gift to them and i find it really mind-boggling when people like ben shapiro hate on barack obama so much it's like you you you're such a partisan hack and even well he wasn't even that left wing but anyways that's the bandages. If you're going to use the Band-Aid analogy, you're advocating for universal health care. Because universal health care isn't putting more bandages on. It's removing the bandages. You know, you clean up the wound and you finally, you know, clean it up and then actually put a real bandage on it that will cure the problem. And Jimmy Dore, you know, sort of, he just kind of debunked that on the fly. And now we're going to look at more of uh, Tim Tool's nonsense. I agree. So if we just had Medicare like the rest of the world has figured out decades ago. I think, I and think, it would save everybody money. We'd all have better health care, and we'd all have better outcomes. There's a, there's, so I don't understand what you could be against on that. I absolutely want everyone in the United States to have access to health care, and it's just for one, it's really complicated, and I don't know if I'm smart enough to like like this is my opinion. I'm not smart enough either, but but I'm I know that gonna, there are people who are smart enough, and they figured it out in every other country decades ago. How big are the countries? Uh, France, uh, UK. Uh, Germany, so, uh, so, so Canada, a thing, right? between 30 and 60 million I mean, each. Russia. Russia has fucking Medicare for all, for F's sake. I mean, we're the last people on Earth who hasn't figured this out. There's a few other really, really co uh, other countries that haven't that makes us look really, really bad in that regard, too. Uh, so, first... I mean, we're like 39th, I think, on health outcomes in the world. The richest country in the world. I mean, it, our system is clearly broken. That we, agree, We're living absolutely. in the bandage. So, and so, the fix is Medicare for all because it takes the profit motive out of it. But go but, ahead. I'm sorry. I don't but, even... but I completely agree with you. All right? And so the, the way I look at it is here's what I want. I want Medicare for all. I want universal health care for everybody. What do we do to get there? Like what do we have to do? Because oh, here's yeah. a problem. The, the health care system is a huge portion of our economy, and upsetting that could destabilize our economy and in turn the rest of the world's economy. There's, 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 it's like it's, almost 20% of our GDP, yeah, I think. which is also kind of nightmarish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a problem and maybe the solution is we're on a drug that needs to be stopped and we need to go, we need to go cold Turkey. Maybe that has to happen. Will there be unforeseen consequences? So right now me being a centrist and having rather tepid opinions, it's kind of like, well, maybe what we should do is start with a government option, a government run program that people can opt into and, and let people have also private insurance at the same time. Like a lot of countries do that too. They're, yeah, they're universal health care. There's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. and lots, then, of, lots of countries have, you know, supplemental insurance also, things yeah. like that. And even Canada has that. Maybe maybe then that's – here's the thing, right? I feel like that's that's the reasonable solution. But, of course, what do we get? We get Obamacare. Of course. Because the Republicans, the Republicans are like, we're not going to grant you a public option. So right. our compromise is no public option. And I'm like, the public option is the compromise. Yes. Right? And that's so, me being compromised. That's that. So let me just also say that. It was Barack Obama, in fact. Uh, the Republicans certainly were against it, but it was Barack Obama who made sure that the public option did not make it into the Obamacare bill. So and it wasn't just Republicans. It was Barack Obama. I understand that it's really complicated, and mm -hmm. I don't know, have all the solutions, but I, but I do feel like we have no government option. Right? No, all, all we have is we, public. We don't have. I, I we mean, don't private. Private. That's we have no and, public option. It's, ridic it's ridiculous that they don't so, offer you to buy into Medicare. It's ridiculous, and it just shows you that we don't live in a democracy. We actually do live in an oligarchy. Absolutely. Like it's been proven. <laughs> it's been proven, and so, everyone still pretends that voting matters. So let me just point out: there's very few things I have particularly strong opinions on because, my God, half the stuff you told me, I'm like, you're, you're right. I just don't know. I'm, I don't. I don't. I won't even know where to begin to figure it out. 
So I have ideas on some things, but I will say this. It blows my mind when it comes to the issue of censorship, though. So as you guys see, basically Jimmy Dore presses Tim Tool on his very stupid position on universal health care, where he's basically claiming that he walked back his position on universal health care because, you know, I don't even know. He doesn't even give an actual legitimate response. He just kind of, like, gives a flub of, like, you know, well, I look at schools and, you know, bandages, bro. You know, the government often just puts bandages on bandages and so that's why i'm advocating for another a bigger bandage instead of a real solution there's no coherency it's obvious there's no thought there we're clearly witnessing another dave rubin right before our eyes that is exactly to the t what we are seeing here and it's embarrassing and usually when people are pressed on on you know serious issues and i know tim tool doesn't really deal with it like actual you know policy position so he doesn't know anything about universal health care or public option or anything like that but and that's why he's so you know ignorant on anything basically in this situation he he pivots to the i'm not smart enough line when you when you start to get into some details like that and you're clearly you know out of your space where you talk about look at this this uh conservative got banned from twitter and that's like all of your videos that you make or your other videos are extremely sur superficial and surface level that's what you end up pivoting to like oh i'm not smart enough to talk about an issue this deep it's like no you're just you know purposely saying that to try to act like you have some humility which you are lying about you just totally flubbed and you don't know what you're talking about the public option by the way that's not going to make everyone insured the public option is just going to provide a buy-in option you're still gonna have to pay money for it it's just gonna be cheaper so it's gonna offer you know some people who would get on it a lot of the people who would actually benefit from the public option are people who already have health insurance which is great we need to help people who already have health insurance because of the high costs but it's not going to put everyone on insurance so because you still have to pay money to get on there and it's basically going to be a medicare buy-in for people who are under 55 so it's this uh really sort of it's better than what we have now but why would you advocate for a public option in you know uh, instead of a universal Medicare for all system? That doesn't make any sense. A public option isn't going to insure everybody. It's not going to fix our problems. It's just going to perpetuate the same garbage that we're facing now. So it's a it's a stupid idea. And as Jimmy Dor Jimmy Dore points out, you know all other modern nations have a universal health care system. And he brings up what are the populations of their of their countries, dude? The UK is what like sixty million people. Uh, we have 350 million, but what difference is it when you're talking about a much bigger piece of a far bigger piece of land with 50 states in it? Well, what's the difference between 350 in there and 60 million in the UK? You know, France has whatever, however million, tens of millions that they have. I think it's like 40 or something like that. There's, there's no, now I could see maybe if it's like a country of 1 million people, then okay, maybe. But when you're talking about 60 million, and then I guess Russia has universal health care too. Um, they have like over a hundred million. The population argument is stupid and doesn't it doesn't make any sense And that's why it fails very often um, Also another dumb point that people like to make is oh well then why do people why do people all around the world come come for our health care then? That's a very uh, a dumb point that's debunked by conservatives themselves because where did Rand Paul recently go to get his whatever what it was like to get a, a surgery on his hernia or his back or something like that uh, because he was brutally attacked by his neighbor, which is very tragic, by the way. It was pretty uh, pretty tough to read about. But why did he go to Canada for that? And I know that his, whoever it was in his campaign, was like, Oh, this is a left-wing smear. This is a private hospital, meaning that the free market works. It's like, no, doofus. It's a private hospital because private hospitals exist in the Canadian system. But if you read about that specific hospital, just like the rest of them, they're publicly funded. So that means if you're in Canada, you can go there for free. So, no, it's not a private hospital in the way it's like, yeah, my free market works great. No, it's a publicly funded hospital that's privately run, which is exactly what's going to what exists in Canada. Here, everyone's going to have a Medicare card. And so private hospitals aren't just going to you know disappear. They're going to be here. Just when you go in, you give them a Medicare card. Um, and then he says, you know, oh, well, yeah, but there are a lot of countries that don't. And they really do make us look bad. Who? Which ones? Which ones are you going to bring? And one of them, I think, like, Ben Shapiro's praised as a Singapore system, which is hilarious because Singapore takes serious government action. So basically what it means is no matter what, 
to have good healthcare outcomes, and I think Ben Shapiro has praised the Philippine system, um, is that you have to have super government action. What they do is they force you, they force you to save money for healthcare expenditures coming up. They literally, fo dude, could you imagine if there was a, a proposal to literally force you to save money? That'd be crazy. Um, and then if you don't have money at the time for whatever reason, they just put money in your account to fund it. Like literally the government just puts money in your account. So that's not a good argument. And what countries? Why didn't you name any of them? Because they don't exist. They're not there. You just made that up and you don't. I think he literally just made that on the fly. Like in his head, he just like synthesized this incredibly stupid point that doesn't make any sense. And then you find out towards the end, like, this guy doesn't really have any positions. And he basically saying that, you know, he doesn't really have any positions. Tim Toole is the Dave Rubin of the of the quote unquote journalism and reporting. <laughs> the dude's a joke. The dude is a clown. And if Jimmy Dore hadn't checked him like this, honestly, I would have been like, why'd you even bring the doofus on? But I low key think that's the reason why he brought him on, which is which is OK. I'm fine with that. But if he hadn't checked him like this, I would have been kind of disappointed. But. Props to Jimmy Dore for uh, <laughs> exposing him for all of us. And also, credit to the comment section because they're unusually full of uh, some people who had, like, correct, you know, takes on this and saying, you know, Tim Tool is a, you know, he's a tool and he's a hack and everything. So, you know, credit to them, too. Credit where credit is due.